Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Our Chicago. I'm Terrell Brown. Nearly a week ago, a gunman went atop a building in downtown Highland Park and began shooting. The crowd below was enjoying the 4th of July parade that day. Seven people were killed. Dozens more were injured. The victims include the parents of a two-year-old boy, a financial advisor, a doting grandfather, and a woman described as part of the fabric of her synagogue. It is impossible to count how many people were affected by this shooting in one way or another. This morning, we're talking with a mental health professional about the impact of a tragedy like this. Dr. Smitha Gotham, child and adolescent psychiatrist with the Family Institute at Northwestern University is with us this morning. Doctor, it's nice to have you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Terrell? I'm, I'm doing really well. Um, I want to start with the kids here. And, and some of them we know saw what happened that day. Um, some of them lost loved ones. Some were, were actually injured themselves. At this point, do you think kids know or understand what they saw, what they witnessed that day? You know, Terrell, it depends on the age of the kid the proximity to the trauma and what uh, traumatic experiences they have had in life before. Mm -hmm. Kids process trauma very differently. If you are thinking of young children, it, they tend to have fragmented sensory imprints of the trauma on their brain. And so it's hard for them to make sense of what they saw because they process it in bits and pieces. So it's very important for the parents, for the caregivers, to tell the kids in simple words what happened. They don't need to know a ton of details. They're looking for uh, reassurance and guidance from adults. Um, and so that's what, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. If your child wants to talk about what happened, use simple language. If your child does not want to talk about what happened, that's okay too, but pay attention to what they are drawing, what they are building, what kind of play they are uh, engaging in. Sometimes kids reenact their sensory imprints through play and ask questions about what it means to them, not the, the, the artistic skill of the play or the drawing, but what it means to them. Understand it from their perspective and try to end the conversation on an optimistic note. Should we try to keep kids talking about it or, or do we wait for them to bring it up? Um, we can ask questions mm -hmm. and see what and take their lead. It's similar to other complex topics that parents often um, educate kids about. We use age appropriate, simple language and don't go into a lot of details. If we see our kids getting triggered by what, what's going on, what we are talking, then steer the conversation towards positive, optimistic, uh, proactive ways that you can reassure kids. What advice do you have for, I mean, doctor, it's hard enough for adults to, to make sense of this. Uh, so, so what do we do to take care of ourselves while we're trying to take care of our kids? Yeah, so self-care is very important. I would ask adults to put less on their plates. You know, simple things like the regular routine, um, not skipping any meals, not skipping exercise, but also making room for emotions and feelings. Don't be threatened by the feelings. Feelings are not permanent, but we have to make room for them, let them process, make their way through us. And some of the ways to do that would be listening to music, making space for crying, uh, engaging in activities that activate parasympathetic nervous system, for example, slow breathing, laughing, holding hands, snuggling with your kids or your pets, going out in nature, singing, dancing. These all activities signal safety to our nervous system. And I would recommend that for the adults. Um, just one more question here before we go to break. Um, we've, we've actually heard and talked to some survivors who say that they're angry over this whole thing. Uh, is that a common response that you're hearing? Yeah, yeah, anger is a common response. You know, Terrell, anger suggests or signals that our boundaries have been violated. Anger is also a signal for powerlessness. And the Highland Park shooting survivors have felt both. And so it's very normal to be angry. Dr. Smitha Gotham, um, hang on, doctor. We're going to take a quick break. We're back with more right after this. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.